All right. Well, uh, really excited uh, to be here with uh, Carl Weaver, owner of Merlin's AC and Plumbing. Uh, Carl, could you just give us, uh, you know, some background about yourself and your company? Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, Carl. I've uh, mm. I've uh, you know my company. We're three years old, uh, January first. So it's now February. So we're just going in our fourth year. Uh, our first year you know, uh, we were out of my house in my garage. Um, you know, it was me, you know, hired two technicians right off the bat. And we just kind of went, we did maybe a little under a million the first year, second year, we did 3 million last year, we did 4.7. And, uh, my background is in marketing. I'm not a actual, you know, I didn't, I am a technician now, uh, but I came in the business doing marketing for other companies. Um, uh, and getting them leads. And uh, then later I learned the sales processes. And then later I learned how to actually be a technician, and go out and do the work. And um, then I decided to get my own license and, and kind of do it for myself. I used to do it for other people. And then when they figured out my magic, they let me go. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I talk to, um, you know, business owners like all the time and, like the the speed of your growth is is something that really stood out for me, and um, you know one of the one of the, the big reasons I you know was uh, hoping to have you on the podcast, and I was uh, I'm just kind of curious like how do you think your your background in marketing impacted how fast or how quickly you guys have been able to grow versus you know people who maybe came the more traditional route where you know they were in the field for ten years and decided eventually to to start on their own. Well, uh, with me being a marketing background uh, versus, you know, a technician, a lot of the guys that are starting businesses that are technicians don't know how to let go and allow other people to actually go out and do the work, you know. So with me, I mean, it was never my priority to actually be the technician. You know, I can be the technician if need be because I actually learned that side of it. But really, when it comes down to it, everybody that works for me is a much better technician than I am you mm. know so I found the technicians first and then started producing leads for them to go run and uh you know a lot of guys I see that do it themselves they can't figure out how to hire one employee they can't hire one employee because they refuse to let go like just allow somebody to go run all your calls and then you can manage your business you know instead of no how am I going to do this and running all my calls myself yeah. yeah, it uh, it kind of reminds me of that that phrase like um, what is it? Uh, necessity is the mother of invention, you know. Where yeah. it's like what what I'm kind of hearing is like with a lot of people, it's like you know, hey, they have an alternative, which is they can do the jobs themselves. In your unique situation, you know, you you know really had to rely on other people, and so you know you were forced to figure out the hiring and the managing and and all of that right out of the gates uh yeah pretty much that's the stuff i like though i like operations you know i'm an operations guy so mm -hmm. so um when you say you're an operations guy like what type of like operations or systems have you set up to help you you know with delegating um or working with uh your techs um, well, currently software, you know, software is, you know, where everything's really helping me out. But even before we, like I run service Titan now, you know, it helps me, you know, keep on track of all the KPIs that I'm looking for. But, uh, you know, even before that, it used to just be, you know, pieces of paper on the wall, you know, we would write down, you know, everybody, all the information, pin it to a wall on Thursday for, you know, 2 p.m., and uh, but just the system of you know prioritizing what type of call it is is it a no cool call is it a tune-up is it a warranty situation is it an estimate you know and then kind of you know color coding those to and then color coding our technicians based off of skills you know as a guy's really good at estimates but he's not good at technically you know or he's really technical you got to color code those put them on the wall you know Make sure you reach out to the customer before you run, you know, when it's done, you know, where does the paperwork go? How do you implement it into the system before you, you know, file it away and forget about it? Mm -hmm. So just staying organized, setting up those processes. And is that just something you're naturally inclined to do? Or did you get like some help with like, 
you know, specific books, specific training from other people? You know, I, I think it might be a little bit natural, you know, because I started reading books way, way later on. I remember in college, we had this assignment and we were sitting around. We just had to explain how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah. As if you as if you knew nothing about making a peanut butter sandwich. And, you know, well, first you got to go to the cabinet, open the door, and then you got to grab the peanut butter and then you got to open the lid, you know. And for some reason, I don't know why, but 90 percent of the class could not properly explain they'll be like first you scoop the peanut butter it's like wait a minute you never even got it you never opened the lid you know you couldn't explain like all the processes of just making a peanut butter jelly sandwich it it's just kind of i passed that part like mine was perfect it's just being able to see all the steps that are required to actually achieve something you know yeah I, i've seen people do that experiment before it's it's really great it's hilarious because you know, you have somebody grab like the jelly, but the steps didn't say to open up the jar. Yeah. And so yeah. the person just like, you know, has like the, you know, the knife and just hitting it on top. And it is, it's all those details. That but really yeah, you have to be able out. to see that process. Like you, you have to know every single step of the process and be able to see the process. Because if you don't open the jar, you can explain somebody to open the jar. And that's actually a really good analogy because, you know, when you're telling people to do stuff, they act that way like what do you mean? I can't get my fork in here. Like, mm -hmm. come on, you can't assume people have common sense. <laughs> yeah. Know, yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting because I, I, I literally ran into this issue yesterday in my business where there was this process and I just assumed that somebody knew how to do it. And then, you know, later on, you know, I came, well, yesterday I went to audit it and I'm like, Oh, wait a second. I just assumed you were going to do it exactly how I wanted it done without ever talking to him. And obviously, you know, as the business owner, it's, this is our fault whenever like anything like that, when that happens. But, you know, I, I think it's, it's also like, it's part of it is maybe like um, the person who's in charge and, and with leadership role, like we have a bigger picture of how things work. And I think another piece of it might be that, um, you know, people uh, who are working in the business, maybe they don't have the ownership you know, or maybe they don't feel like they they know of all the tools that they could be using to get to get that job done or to to fix that that uh, that process. Yeah. So I mean, it does take. I, I feel it takes someone to strategize in the, in the strategy. You know, behind everything is is kind of the key component of everything. Mm. And you can do. It's just you know, if you do without a strategy or, or a purpose, you know, it's you're just kind of wasting time you're spinning in circles. Totally. So, um, you know, one of the things, Carl, that, that really, you know, stood out is um, I know that uh, part of your growth or, um, you know, it seemed like a big part of your growth was this, um, was this outbound call center. Could you maybe talk a little bit about, uh, about what that is and how that's, uh, how that's helped you grow? Yeah. So our outbound call center, you know, that's definitely, you know, cost for acquisition is is pretty low now it starts out pretty tricky but once you get going and, and you got customers you've been talking to um, but basically uh, we run a charity actually and uh, the charity we call out uh, to homeowners and you know neighborhoods that we want to penetrate and we call them and offer them discounts on you know H we do plumbing as well so we do uh, you know um, HVAC maintenances, plumbing tune-ups, you know, water heater draining, duct cleaning, uh, garage door tune-ups, solar appointments. You know, I don't personally do garage doors, but I have produced um, enough leads for garage door companies. You know, uh, pretty much any home service company can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. My particular market, I've done it in a few markets. I've done it in uh, Texas. I've done it in Vegas and I've done it here in Arizona. And Arizona seems to be the hardest market to penetrate. It's okay. just my niche. We actually have more air conditioning companies here in Phoenix, Arizona, than we have pizza places. Uh, wow. Like there's literally everywhere. But we just basically call. We give them, you know, good promotion. It's a loss leader, you know. So, we, you know, we're calling. It's $39.99 to come out and drain your water heater or to clean out your air conditioner and, and give it a good wash. So it is a loss leader because we're paying, you know, somebody, you know, 17, 18 bucks an hour to make phone calls and, and do all this. So, you know, we pay them, you know, seven, 800 bucks a week. 
and they give us but if you just go out and you perform well you know the customers buy contracts from you they use you for you know whatever they need you know we you know, add a insulation or they have us change their water heater. So even though we're showing up for 30 bucks and it might cost us 200 to produce that, you know, um, our average ticket, you know, is, is high enough to, to compensate for that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah I got a, uh, currently we just, we actually just downsized a little bit. We had our call center up to 88 people. Uh, so we just downsized actually dramatically. We're uh, we're down to about fifteen right now. Um, you had eighty eight people in house, like, or were they working remote? Um, no, no, in house. Yeah, no, forty four shift. So uh, we were doing we we call from eight to eight. Those are the call uh, call center laws. So okay. from eight in the morning, you know, we were it was eight to two and two to eight. So we just had two different shifts, and. Uh, basically we we were a brand new company we didn't have any customers so we went from having no customers to having over four thousand uh homes under contract now and we basically did that all last year uh, but now with the four thousand people we have under contract plus you know the tens of thousands of people that we've actually serviced you know now we call back those people you know with the call with the cold calls, but now we're just calling people that used us last year, people that are under contract. So I got about 15 people right now scheduling about 50 a day, um, as opposed to, you know, uh, we were getting maybe, maybe a hundred a day. Uh, You're getting higher. 50 people on your schedule from the 15 people uh, dialing. Is what you're saying? Yeah. So right now, yeah, we put between 40 and 50 calls on the board every day. Wow. That's a, and that's just from the phone, just from the phone that, room. That's amazing. So like I was, um, you, you started by saying something about a charity and then it switched to like an offer. Could you? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the telemarketing laws are always changing, you know, and are ever changing. There's a couple things with telemarketing that, um, uh, that you're allowed to do. It, and so we scrub against the do not call list anyways you know a lot of call people are on the do not call list so we're constantly scrubbing you know we're, we have a dialer move the do not call list numbers uh, but you are allowed to call like on the off chance that you end up getting somebody that's on the do not call list uh, there's two there's two provisions uh, one is if you're calling for a charitable donation mm -hmm. and two is if you're calling for uh, political reasons okay uh, both of those are immune to the the do not call lists i was so not aware of that but yeah. <laughs> i think that's kind of hilarious yeah so what we do is yeah. we actually donate we donate 100 percent of the money so the 39.99 uh we're involved with local charities so basically i take all of that money and mm -hmm. we uh we here we have uh we have uh, uh adopted the adoption centers and mm -hmm. uh, when these kids are turning 19 they kind of get kicked out on the street uh, you know, mm -hmm. they get to live in the system for a while, but once they're 19, they can't do anything with them. So they kind of just kick them all out. So we, not only do we hire these kids, but we actually donate to their, uh, their houses and it helps them get cell phones and housing and, and all this stuff when they actually turn 19. And one, we want, you know, we have a school associated with our company as well, um, we're trying to get these kids before they either go to jail or they go into the army. We're trying to give them a third option of actually mm. getting into a trade. You know, not a lot sure. of them are going, going to colleges and everything. So we're trying to offer them trades and, um, but yeah, we donate, we donate the, all that money out anyways. Kind of so, just, so the call center, it basically, it, uh, they reach out, um, you're offering this promotion, which is just a $39 tune-up. All of the $39 goes to charity. And um, the idea is you guys go in, you get into the home, do a great job, and hopefully you get like, you know, uh, repeat business from that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we have about uh, 70, 80 percent uh, contract sales. So once we're in there, you know, our guys, you know, seven out of 10 times, those customers are going to be like, wow, you guys did a real good job for us. And we'll put them on a yearly maintenance package where we come out, you know, every six months to do their routine maintenance. What does your maintenance package look like? 
Uh, with us, we have different levels because we have, you know, we have plumbing, we have air conditioning. So just like a basic air conditioning, we come out uh, two times a year, once pre, you know, both preseason, uh, once before summer, once before winter. And, you know, we go over everything. We, we check how much electrical draw there is. We wash out the air conditioners, blow out drain lines, you know, give them discounts, give them priority service. So if they need, say, we're out there two times a year but they, something happens in the middle of the year. We were there before summer, but something happens during summer. Just call us. You never have to pay for us to come over to the house. We'll send someone over there. You get discounts on whatever work that needs to be done. And, uh, you know, it's a few hundred bucks a year to do. So it makes, mm -hmm. it makes sense for the customers. We even have monthly payments, you know, that we could just set them up over recurring payments. So for as little as, you know, nine bucks a, a month, you know, we can get them on at least a basic program. And then they can decide to, you know, step it up if they want their water heaters flushed or, you know, whatever they want. Yeah. Well, that's excellent. I mean, to get uh, 4,000 contracts in the last couple of, well, you said most of it just came last year, right? Most of it came last year. Like the first year we were just in my, in my basement, you know, we weren't really yeah. doing that. And then the, you know, last year we started it, we started it with about 10. Like I said, we, went, we had about 10 to start out with and it worked really well. We upped that to 88. And, uh, but now we're just kind of focused on profitability and, you know, we were, we were just gun ho and fill the calendar. We need a client base. And so now that we have that client base, we kind of just brought it back down to more price. Cause it, when you're dealing with that many people at any given moment, half of them are being trained, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And they're not producing as high as the other half. So now that we kind of accomplished our goal, we kind of just allowed all the, everybody to fall back down to you know just the top people and yeah uh, now we're just rotating with the top people yeah well you probably have like a fraction of um the costs but since you've held on to the most efficient people you know your uh your production you know is probably yeah. you know probably didn't drop that much well yeah because well what ha what happened was we were renting two buildings and on one building we were running our call center out of and the other building we were running you know our main operation out of and but what happened was our lease came up and our lease tripled. You know, oh, wow. you know, they wanted triple, they wanted triple the rent. Mm. And uh, it just it didn't make sense because we were we were renting at we had about nine thousand square feet at the time. And it didn't make sense to operate, you know, paying triple on on the because our, our housing market went up and yeah. we're paying X and now we're paying X times three for the building and it didn't make sense on a profit and loss. So we just subtracted mm -hmm. down to what does make sense. But now, I mean, I was really only getting about 50 a day anyways, 50, 60 a day, you know, good days we were getting maybe a hundred and we're still at that 50 a day now, isolated down, but just because we have repeat, you know, we're calling people that we talked to six months ago or four sure. months ago that told us, Hey, this, and we sent them emails. And now we've been sending them Facebook books and, you know, all kinds of stuff because we're retargeting those customers and now they're just easier, you know? So now our cost per acquisition is down to like 40 bucks, you know, 40 bucks a lead where our cost per acquisition when we started was maybe 250 yeah. bucks per lead, you know? Yeah. And you know, one of the things that I know a lot of business owners have a hard time kind of like, wrapping their head around is this idea of, you know, losing money or being negative in acquiring a customer like from day one. And then, um, you know, kind of like just trusting or, or having this belief that, look, it's going to come around, um, you know, with the repeat business later on uh, with the lifetime customer value. How do, how do you look at this? Um, we were never at a loss. You know, I know my average ticket prior to spending money you know so you know just take your average 10 tickets that you run the average 10 you know homeowners that you go to you know we're at around 1700 a ticket you know mm -hmm. so if we run 10 calls we're bringing in close to seventeen thousand dollars. you know so at 1700 a ticket i can afford to spend 300 dollars to acquire a customer you know i know if i spent 300 dollars per customer and i my average ticket 17 and i know what my margins are then mm. I can afford to go down that route, you know, and a lot of people, if you don't know those numbers and you're just guessing that you're, you know, if your average ticket's only 200, 
You know, you need to really work on your average ticket prior to uh, go to just like like billboard space. Like if you're not dominating Google and and your local your local stuff, you shouldn't be picking up billboards. (laughs) You know, the billboards come in after you already have, you know, pretty good local. You know, if they see you in Google air conditioning where your billboard is and they find everybody else but you, you know, that's not a good place to be. Yeah. Now we had a, a client that we were working with and we are working with in, um, in Michigan and uh, they were waiting for their rankings to hit in order to take out TV, uh, radio and billboard advertising for exactly, exactly what you had, uh, you had said. Yeah. I think we do pretty well with TV too. TV, uh, you know, here we can get on the local morning show for like $500. Yeah. You know, and it's a real big market and we can, take that those you know videos and, and repopulate them on social media and everything and uh you know it's real good 500 dollars spent to go on the saturday morning show and talk about you know air filters i'm surprised at how cheap it is actually yeah you know we started in january 1 2020 with COVID hit yep and uh, we were one of the only spenders at that time so oh, you know wow. all the restaurants backed out you know all these advertising agencies thought they were going to go bankrupt mm-hmm. so they really gave us packages we were getting we were getting you know football and baseball you know tv ads for like 25 dollars you oh know 30 gosh. second commercials and they were doing all <laughs> the you know we they're like because everybody pulled out every restaurant in town everybody COVID happened the world shut down everybody stopped advertising and home service fields all kind of doubled and tripled during mm-hmm. that time you know now all these private equity groups are just buying out air conditioning companies left and right uh everybody in our town is sold everybody really yeah, if you're doing more than $10 million here in Phoenix, every single every single air conditioning company has been sold. Hmm. These private equity groups are giving uh, EBITDA times 20. Uh, so, you know, whatever the home, you know, whatever the owner of the business is is taking yeah. home every time, 20. Yeah, yeah, a 20, yeah, 20x multiple is, that's very, very high. I didn't, I didn't realize it was that. I had heard oh, that some of these guys yeah, like let, four or five. No, no, no. These these big players in town, like they the big players are getting 20, 20 times. Uh, even the small players are getting 10 okay. because they're picking up like I've been offered, you know, I've been offered about three times just in the last year to be purchased because mm-hmm. a lot of these other smaller companies are just picking up, you know, maybe six, you know, two million dollar companies and then they're packaging them up for the private yeah. equity groups because, you know, they'll they'll pay five. You know, they'll pay 5X because they know they're selling them at 17 there. Yeah, that's a, that's a strategy in digital marketing also, where yeah. it's, um, it's basically like the multiple goes higher as the EBITDA gets higher. So if the yeah. EBITDA is like above a million, then you can maybe sell it like an eight or a 10. But if it's below a million, maybe you're at like three or four. And so yeah. they'll just uh, consolidate a bunch of the smaller ones, you know, and they well, the guys that I know they got higher. over 20, they're over $100 million companies. What was that? The guys that I know that are getting like 20, uh, they're, they're $100 million companies. Okay. You know, 100 plus million revenue. You know, revenue. And the guys that there's, there's some, you know, local competitors I know, and uh, they were right at about 30 million, mm-hmm. you know, in revenue, and they got $50 million for their company. And they were wow. only doing, and they were only doing thirty million in revenue. So, you know, mm. that EBITDA had to be like, you know, ten percent, or you know, I don't, I don't know what they were doing. It's a nice payday, multiple. for that's, sure. That's like a fifteen percent multiple, you know, or yeah, hundred fifty percent. So, Carl, like with the, um, you know, I keep on coming back to this call, call center, but like, is that what your background was? You know, when uh, when you, you said you came from marketing. <laughs> Um, yeah, I used to establish call centers for other companies. Um, so I would kind of go in, not just call centers. That's one of my, I mean, we do, I do direct door, you know, we do door to door, uh, call centers, we do trade shows, we do, uh, TV, we do radio, you know, I do everything besides like what you do, you do digital, yeah. you do yep. digital marketing. I do all, you know, that's how me and you met. We were talking about, you know, mm-hmm. you, you know, in your digital marketing, um, I do everything else that's and I still do digital marketing, but my traditional aspects of marketing probably make up 90% of, of what we're doing. 
it's uh, my digital my you know that's where i lack is on the digital side i'm only i'm only generating you know i got my google local businesses and i have everything it's mm-hmm. just you know like facebook has never been like a steady scalable lead source for me i get calls but it's not like my call center i know that every employee i get in my call center is going to give me three a day you know what i'm saying so if i put yeah. them in give me three a day and then that's very easy to scale you know it's like cool so i'll just go get 10 and i'll get 30 a day sure. you know and if not you know we just drop some of them will give me 10 a day on a good day and some of them might not give me any but it's so easy to scale and it's really hard to do that for me on like pay-per-click campaigns you know and it's like it's, you throw all this money and you're like hoping and wishing you know, it, mm-hmm. you know it's just well the numbers a- the numbers don't look nearly as um attractive as well for like pay-per-click for google ads they don't look nearly as attractive as you know you're saying uh 45 or even 200 uh customer acquisition cost if you're going on Google ads, it's a, um, it's an auction based system. So you're literally competing against all of the private equity, you know, private equity. Yeah. Companies. Oh, I know. Yeah. Sometimes it'd be a hundred click, at least in my market. Yep. Yeah. So you're in one of the most competitive markets in the U S per, per click, just, just yeah. to get a click. And yeah. who knows how many people are just clicking it. <laughs> well, the <laughs> average, the average conversion rate is 10%. So if it's $50 a click, you know, that's $500 a call. If it's $25 a click, that's $250 a call, but not every call is a new customer, you know? And so those numbers yeah. get really, you know, the, the the acquisition cost gets really, really high, really, really fast. And so it's got, it's very, very cool that you found, um, you know, another avenue. Well, what they do- take inbounds too. So they're really good at closing. They get spiffs, you know, they get, they get paid to make sure if our phone rings, they close that call. Yeah. You know, so they, they get X amount for scheduling X estimates, X amounts for getting them on tune ups. Because if anybody calls in just shopping, you know, they need to know how to close. You know, and they got a pretty good, high, you know, 70, 80 percent of every time they pick up a phone, they're booking an appointment. Based That's great. Off of phone call, you know, yeah. What mistakes do you think someone uh, would make if they tried this on their own? Or what mistakes did you make, or what did, what um, you know lessons did you learn over the last couple of years of building this system out? Oh man, uh, I made all the mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know. It's really hard. You really got to get people with experience in the cold call marketplace. It's it's a different environment. It's really trench warfare. It's not the same as calling, you know, just regular telemarketing or business to business. You really have to find people that have experience in that in that niche. Uh, with me, um, getting people established at home never worked. You know, I've tried I've tried it a hundred times. And yeah. For me, purpose uh, for me myself is just easier. They really need someone, and I, I've done I've done a lot of telemarketing in other fields too, though. So in other things, I can get them to work from home remotely. But this particular one, I can't, <laughs> and I've tried it a million times, and it just doesn't doesn't work for me. Um, so I, I literally have to have them all in a row with a man, you know, being there as a manager and kind of working through rebuttals and stuff like that. Um, you know, law, especially nowadays, um, their software, like the phone companies are spending, you know, millions and tens of millions of dollars to stop telemarketers at this point. So you can, you can't, you know, anything that, you know, if you make a phone call more than 20 times a day, now you get automatically spammed, uh, you know, and then once you get spammed and that, that's just something over like last year that's being produced. So with all this, you know, stuff there's technology to counteract that, you know, but you kind of got to stay up, you know, and when we started, we were manually dialing too, like we were physically pushing the buttons yep. on, on stuff and we kind of, you know, upgrown from there and, and uh, you know, got, you know, actual dialing systems, but then they constantly changed the laws. So you constantly got to scrub against the do not call list. You have to scrub against the do not call list. You have to register that you're making phone calls. Like you have, there's, there's a legal process to go through. Um, and you're going to, you know, you're going to want to follow that. 
Okay. You're going to want to stay up on, you know, so it's hard to tell people to jump in it because they're constantly changing the laws, too. They're constantly changing the laws on what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. And at this point, we're pretty much, uh, we're pretty much, you know, 90% brand new, you know, not brand new customers, but uh, people that we've already been in contact with. Yeah. But I've also been doing call centers for 12 years, you know, so uh, started with other companies. But once I put it together, you know, secret sauce is it, you know, they're like, oh, this is all you were doing. Yeah, this is all I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh, thank you. You know, like I can take it over from here. And I did that maybe six times. Like I, I my specialized in taking mom and pop companies yeah. and turning them into, you know, streamline. We could get them up to about, you know, five, six million dollars. Get them from like, you know, I've done that many, many times for many, many companies is just kind of get them from the, hey, this is just me and my son to, hey, we have 14 employees now, and and now we can just kind of sit back and watch the operation go, or we can be the general manager, we can be the accountant if we want to be. Yeah. But I, me personally, I'm not the general manager of my company. I don't, I don't run my day-to-day. I kind of just put my operation in place, and my general managers, and my sales managers, and my service managers, and my call center managers, and my, you know, uh, they handle day-to-day for me. I can literally... You know, I sign checks and I come in and yeah. I, I like the marketing aspect. I, I like it. So I've decided to be in that portion of the business. Um, but otherwise, you know, you find yourself a marketing manager. You can go find somebody like me that, that likes marketing, and hire him and have him even deal with companies like you for that. You know, like sure. she's like, no, no problem. Let me get the marketing agencies and you just tell me where you want to go and I'll make sure we get there. You know? Yeah. You're um you're a legit business owner, you know, instead of being in the business. Yeah, I try my best. I, I, today, I'm actually substituting my general managers. Uh, my general managers in Las Vegas at a at a uh, at a work event, you know. Okay. So, I thought you were going to say bachelor party. No, no, he, yeah, no, he's not <laughs> a bachelor party type of guy. He's a uh, he's going to have his laptop right next to him right now, Good. glasses on, paying attention. Uh, also, what I did notice too, one thing, one thing that I noticed too, just going growing up in the trade and, and kind of going to a lot of conventions where people are talking, um, there you there's usually three things that kind of set me apart going to like seminars and stuff. Yeah. Um, and the first one I'm not getting anymore. I used to be the youngest because I started I started doing my own company when I was my first company, you know, this one's three years old. My first company I was 24. But there was uh, three things that happened. One, I was usually the youngest person in the room. Mm-hmm. When I was there. Being 24, you know, there's a lot of guys that are way older than me. Um, but anyways, I was usually the youngest. I was definitely the most interactive person in the room. So, like, I'm paying attention. I'm asking questions. You know, I'm not just like, you know, everybody else kind of sit there and just, are you absorbing this knowledge? Are you not absorbing sure. this knowledge? But, you know, so I was definitely the most interactive person in the room, asking questions, challenging you know, a lot of times the speakers I've been known for challenging, you know, the teachers and, and, mm-hmm. and maybe not agreeing with them, but still understanding what they're teaching. <laughs> and uh, most of the time, I was also the most successful person in the room, too. And even though I'm not in my terms of success, I'm not there. Yet. Like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at these guys in my in my market. I'm a very small player. Yeah. You know, uh, I got guys doing 250 million a year. And, uh, you know, I'm under, I'm under five, we did 4.7, you mm-hmm. know, uh, where, you know, and there's yeah, even got, they used to work for me, you know, and they're doing 20. So it's not like, mm-hmm. you know, it's not like I'm the guru of all. It's just, you know, I do have a self-sufficient company. Well, you found, you found something that works very, very well. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm drinking this like uh, uh, vitamin mix, and I guess like it wasn't uh, mixed in enough, and so it just got completely stuck in my throat here. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know what? One one of the things that you said, Carl, that really like stood out to me is this this idea that you know you were building these call centers for all of these people, you know, and seeing them scale. And um, I just had in my mind like you know the power of acquisition. You know, it's like once you have 
you're an acquisition channel that's like really set. And especially if it's an acquisition channel that's scalable, you know, as you were talking about, like, hey, one person is setting three, uh, three appointments up for day for a day, like it is the juice, you know, it's almost like it's like the lifeblood of a business where, you know, um, they, there's this, you know, you've, you know, I'm sure you've heard like sales solves all problems. And yeah. I feel like that's, you know, I feel like, you know, you were kind of uh, the engine for so many people. And uh, it sounds like after a while, you're just like, oh, well, screw this. I'm just going to do it for myself. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what happened. I got screwed over about five. I used to be a general manager. I used to be a general manager for a couple of companies too. And um, yeah, I, just, I got sick of getting pushed to the curb. Yeah. I, I did it for other people and I would have stayed loyal and I would have stayed working for people for, for a long time. But it's like one, you know, a lot of people, yeah, secret side. Cause I set up systems where I don't have to be part of, you sure. know? So when, when they're like, Hey, what do you do all day? What do you mean? What do I do all day? I put together the system and I make sure it runs. I don't physically work inside the systems that I that I put in place. Yeah. And neither do you. You're the owner. You don't have to work. But don't be mad at me because I put together the systems where none of us got to work now. <laughs> you know, they're like, well, if you're not doing anything on a day to day basis, then I'll take it from here. You want to see the call center? I can open the door. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. yeah. Let me pick up. I'm on my laptop. So today is Friday. We got different shifts and stuff around it. But let's see who's here. We're probably not at full capacity right now. But currently, hello. hello. Hey Sorry, guys. you're on blast. <laughs> this is uh, this is our, uh, you know, scheduling department here. And, okay. And uh, this is our dispatch team. You know, this is our dispatch. They, this they work with our technicians. Yeah. Here, and then she's on our morning shift, and we have a girl that comes in on the afternoon shift, and these guys make all the magic happen. And they're on the phones and they're scheduling. And excellent. <clears throat> and so yeah, there are a lot of problems. Like right now, February. February is the worst month. There's but like hiring. I'm able to hire, like we're packed. I we're booked all the way to April. We have every single calendar space full until April. Um, so I'm hiring. You know, most of the guys right now, I'm able to acquire some really good talent. Because a lot of companies are not don't can't even give their guys ten hours of work. Sure. This year, and we're booked. We're at full capacity. I I have to have more employees just so they can continue to make phone calls. You know, because yep. they're like, hey, what do we do with this? They can't even schedule a call for three weeks out. So they're putting them three weeks out. Right now, mm -hmm. three weeks out. <laughs> Well, um, so I, it does, I mean, it does work. It, it's it's a great, I definitely recommend it. it works for any home service, really. You know, it's great. You know, we can schedule, you know, just any home service. We do garage door, you can do landscaping, you know, yeah. just, you know, they're already on the phone, you know. And a lot of times I sell a lot of my leads. We'll, uh, we'll actually book too many leads and I'll call people I know in the trade and actually send them over because that's the kind of like an Angie's list. It's a, it's, a, it's it's like a separate company that I own that produces leads, you yeah. know? So even when we book appointments, we'll, we'll book appointments dry and just tell them that their contractor will reach out to them. Like if we're booked, we'll just be like, Hey, it's going to be a local service provider. They're going to be five-star rated. Um, you know, they're going to be, you know, a plus with the BBB have guaranteed four to five stars, you know, mm -hmm. ISIS bonded and insured. And then we'll just sell big batches off to our competitors even just because, Hey, yeah. you have an I overflow. Have many guys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you'll only need to do that for so long until you, uh, you know, build up your, uh, you know, build up your crews. And uh, yeah, well, where it gets around where the calls are coming from and then people start coming over, you know, yeah, they're like, yeah, they're like hey, I heard you with the guy that was producing the leads. You know, I got a lot of people that don't like me. Yeah. Get well, technicians. You know, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's really great though, you know, and, and I really hope that, you know, this, um, this video, this, uh, interview, you know, is like an inspiration to people because like, I know so many people struggle in the shoulder months and they're yeah. just like, Hey, what the heck do I do? You know, like, and, and that's it. It's just like, it's like throwing up their hands, you know, being like, well, what is it? You know, how can we generate demand when the demand isn't automatically there? Yeah. Go knock on a door. 
I mean, we knock on doors too. Yeah, we we go door to door and we will knock on the door. Like we have crews that knock on the door. Home shows, you know, it's all cold audience. You know, nobody has ever heard of us. They didn't, you know, and we'll set up booths anywhere we can set up a booth. You know, I got yeah. a little pop tent and a table and, uh, you know, we're, we'll go, especially with the charities that we donate to, we'll go show up to their events and we'll pop up tables because, you know, we give them X amount of dollars every month so we could go to all their events and they push for us as well. You know, they're a lead source. The charities are a lead source. You, give them, you know, you donate to them and then they tell all their people to use you. You know, yeah, I, I just like, I love how, um, you know, like in business, there's like such similarities because, you know, I think about, you know, my company and my agency and, you know, for years we, you know, we rank for like certain keywords, we get business that way. Um, we have partners who refer us business. We've got, you know, insane amount of referrals and word of mouth business, you know, that's where, how we've primarily grown. But the second we figured out how to get cold traffic to convert, you know, where we can literally have cold yeah. traffic, we can take out ads. And then, you know, we figured out our system that like, I mean, we we're able to grow in two weeks, what took us six months. Yeah. You know? cold, cold traffic. And yeah. That's, that's, it. and it's not, and it took, it took a while. It took us like a year of really tweaking and figuring things out in order, in order to get it done. And it's like, and I'm, I'm hearing the same thing with you of like, all the law, scrubbing the list, changing your phone numbers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, but hey, you know, like, was it worth it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> 100%, yeah. 100% worth it, you know? Yeah. So we, we, we have a huge base now. We, we don't have to spend nearly as much on advertising dollars. You know, the first year, sure. Yeah, we probably, you know, I didn't take home as much as I could have. But I took home what I needed and I put the rest into my company. We're a brand new company. If you're not putting everything you can into your brand new company, then, mm. you know, you need to be looking at yourself, figuring out, you know, what do you need to take home? You know, because I just take home exactly what I need. Now yeah. I can take home more, you know, but it's like, hey, I just need to pay my bills right now. I need to get an established company that's going to pay me for the long run and kind of do whatever it takes to do it. Yeah, you know? that's, that's amazing. So, so Carl, as we um, wrap up over here, I just want to ask you, you know, uh, final question, is there anything, you know, you would say to uh, a business owner who's either considering going down this path or, you know, either with the, you know, the outbound stuff or, you know, just that anyone and maybe just more gen general advice to somebody who's starting their, uh, their home service business, what would you say? Yeah. So, you know, pro probably the exact opposite of what most people would think make sure this is what you want to do. Like, you know, please read the e-myth. Um, I don't know if, if you've read it, but make sure you yeah, want Michael to be a Gerber. business owner. Business, I mean, as a business owner, I only handle problems. Problems, that, that's it. I handle one problem to the next problem to the next problem. And a lot of people that don't have that in them will break. <laughs> like I've seen a lot of guys, especially that came from being technicians and they're like, Hey, I'm a great technician. I'm going to start doing it myself. And now all they're doing with is problems, 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 problems. They're no longer working on equipment. You know, they're no longer doing what they like to do and work with their hands. Just make sure you want to be a business owner. If not, Hey, come work for me. You know, I got it. I can get you, I can get you in exactly what you want to do. But uh, I've seen becoming a business owner ruin a lot of people, you know, mm. and it's great for, it's great for a lot of people. It is amazing and i love being a business owner and i can't vision my wit you know my personal path any other way but that's not the same for you know some of my family they kind of went down the same avenue and they're just completely emotional wrecks <laughs> you know what i'm yeah. saying and, yeah uh, no i um i i think that like entrepreneurship is the the best or like fastest track for personal growth because, you know, you deal with so many emotional things, you know, things are always breaking, uh, the bigger you get, the higher the stakes get, you know, um, yeah. for making it work. But um, I don't know, I, I mean, the way I perhaps you look at it the same way, Carl, but it's like, the way I kind of look at it is like, that is, um, it's like the challenge, you know, it's like, oh, okay, cool. Here's something new for me to learn. Here's like yeah. a new skill for me to develop. You know, and uh, I love it. And then a true entrepreneur yeah. loves it as well. Um, but yeah, if it's just a if it's just a, a spurt of entrepreneur inspiration, 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's read the e-myth. I just, that's, I would recommend that to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I've read it, you know, 15 times I've read, I've read the e-myth. It's, it's something that kind of gets me, you know, gets me going and, and sets me on the, on the right path. But, you know, other people like it, just cause you bake pie is great. Doesn't mean you can own a restaurant. You know, owning a restaurant right. is completely different than baking apple pies. You might make the best apple pies in the world, but it doesn't mean you're going to enjoy being a restaurant owner. Yeah, totally. Well, Carl, um, you know, thank you so much for taking the time this morning. Thank you so much for, you know, sharing all these insights. I'm so sure it's going to help uh, a ton of people. Um, if anyone wants to get in contact with you, uh, what's the, the best way for that to happen? Um, probably send me an email. I, you know, I check my emails regularly and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm completely free for helping people. You know, I, I enjoy helping people. If anybody's struggling, you know, I wouldn't mind answering a few questions. Okay. You know? And what's that email? Oh, uh, with me, it's a uh, GM at Einstein's home services.com. Awesome. <clears throat> I'll put that somewhere in, uh, in some notes. Um, okay. for everybody, um, hang on with me for just a second, but everybody else, uh, See you guys on the next one.